it's Meg and Daisy and welcome to the Craftinoon podcast, a podcast about journaling, creativity and everything in between. Today's guest is Kaylee Gray, a South African artist and author living in Germany. Kaylee is the creator of Get Messy, which is an online art journaling community. Today we're chatting to Kaylee about her art journey and her thoughts on inspiration. This was honestly such a good discussion. Kaylee is always full of words of wisdom. And if you don't know who Kaylee is yet, then you are in for an absolute treat. I hope you enjoy. So, hey, Kaylee, welcome to the podcast. Hi, I'm really excited to be here. If we could start off, maybe you just telling us a bit about yourself, your creative process and what, what you do, what you create. I'm an art journaler, my number one. Number two, probably that I run Get Messy, which is an art journaling community and and platform and school and whatever you want to call it. I I love creating in journals just because of how imperfect they're allowed to be and how freeing it is. And there's not really a lot of struggle when you're creating it all because you know that if you completely stuff it up, you can rip it out the journal or turn the page or burn the journal or whatever you want to do. It's a very easy way to just find the value in creating itself. A lot of times people come to me and maybe you get this as well. They say, where do you find inspiration? How do you find inspiration? Inspiration feels like a dirty word to me because what what tends to happen if we are not creating, we use the excuse that I'm not inspired or I'm waiting for inspiration when really creating has absolutely nothing to do with inspiration and everything to do with just creating like you can just go to your journal and create and I know it's I know that it's easier said than done but once you've been doing it for a while you're just able to like make you don't need the inspiration is not required for your creating and when when I start to have a problem with inspiration is is when people rely on it you know same as uh, when people say they're looking for motivation, like I don't believe in motivation either. It's so fleeting and so you, you're not in control of it at all. So it's better to find something that you are in control of and, and work from there. Um, I, I tend to think that inspiration really should not be called inspiration unless it leads to creating I like the term inspiration, you know, like it, it feels like less of a dirty word to me when, when you turn something into art, then yeah, then fine. It's inspiration. But if you just like scrolling through Instagram or scrolling for, through Pinterest, like lying on your couch, like with your thumb going up and down on your phone and just like waiting for something to inspire you. No, that's nonsense. So does that tie in maybe then with the type of art that you create and what you create when you show up um there's something there that you want to maybe communicate that's interesting I think yeah that's an interesting way of seeing it because I mean there are different ways to come to your art you could come to it from inspiration and turn the inspiration into something else and turn into something else until it eventually becomes art but the way that I create and I think the beauty of art journaling specifically is the fact that you go to your your page and you just you either go there knowing what you want to say and then you say it but I like to figure out what I'm trying to say I think there was I don't know a rat or something like they say they're right in order to figure out what they're trying to say can't remember who said it but there's something about that and that's the way I journal is I come to my journal and then all of a sudden there's something on the page and I'm like oh that's what that's what's happening in my head like that I understand that now um and it's not something obvious or maybe not something other people can understand but I get it you know I it helps me figure out what's going on in this mess over head this is like the first time I've heard any sort of alternative way to think about inspiration and I do really like it <laughs> There's bits of it that kind of I I don't 100% agree with, but also the way you said in, inspiration, I liked that because I think the biggest issue that I find 
especially when my circumstances changed on like my routine and stuff was like turning it from seeing something and going oh that's a really nice color scheme I want to use that somewhere and turning it from that to actually doing it that's the bit that I still struggle with is the turning it from a thought and going oh I really like that or I've seen something and then actually going ahead and doing it is like yeah that's the like little hurdle that I need to get better at so I might take that on board a little bit yeah and I mean there's nothing I feel like there's also nothing wrong with the like warm fuzzies that Pinterest and Instagram can give you I have a I have a problem when when that's confused for creating so similarly supplies right like obviously you need art supplies to make art you need paint or paper or whatever you're going to use but sometimes it can be used as a form of outsourcing your creativity right like sometimes we see a tutorial and we're like oh I need that to make art and then you you buy the supplies but then you never make the art because you've already had that feeling of creating art just by buying the supplies so it's the same with inspiration like as soon as it becomes something that replaces your art creating or something that you're doing instead of making art, that's my issue. That's my, that's my beef with it. I'm so <laughs> guilty of buying things and then not using them. <laughs> right? I feel like everyone can relate to that. Um, yeah. yeah. All the, all the unused art supplies, but um, so how do you get over that hurdle then with um, turning it from the inspiration into action? Do you have like a process for that or something that you follow yeah, um, I mean, there's different there are different ways that I go about it. Most of the time, when I'm creating, it doesn't come from it doesn't come from a feeling of being, uh, yeah, for lack of a better phrase, like warm and fuzzy and going to create. Usually, I just create because I know that it's good for me. It's the same as it's the same as like how we eat. Like you get hungry and you go eat, right? There's just like something in me that knows I need to create, and so I just create. Um, but I do really like tangibly turning inspiration into art. So, um, well, this morning I'm looking at my journal now and this morning I read an email from someone and they spoke about something called, um, deadheading, which has to do with plants. It's where you like cut off dead flowers from a plant. Okay. I have no gardening experience at all, but I understand the concept, you know, you cut off the dead heads in order to make room for growth for the plant. Okay. So just that like phrase and the email was about gardening, right? But just the phrase like sparked something in me. And then I knew that I would have to create something from that and use it as a seed. So all I did is I made a page that says dead heading in it with like a picture of a, of a flower, but scribbled so that it's dead like part of it um and so that is like as a catalyst and a starting point and kind of like a prompt also like like being very actional actionable about the things that I take in um I like to turn books that I've taken in into a journal by way of lettering and just really like making pretty things or by meditating on it while I'm creating that kind of thing. I feel like when people talk about inspiration, it then goes to, I'm feeling uninspired to creative block and art block. So do you, do you experience that? And if you do, how do you, how do you deal with that? Yeah. I currently going through massive, massive creative block. And I've been thinking about what it means because I was speaking to a friend and, and she was saying like, when she isn't making any art it doesn't mean that her brain is not going right and I was like yeah obviously like my head is still going like I've got a million ideas but for me creative block is when I'm not able to make anything that feels like like breathing out or like it feel like I, I can never take like a break and go that look like now I feel good um so yeah, when, when I am going through creative block, like I am now, then I tend to be more literal in my inspiration. So, you know, like the other day I took photos of graffiti and then I turned that into a zine and that was like an easy starting point for me, for my art creating. And today I literally wrote words from an email from someone. Whereas when I'm not going through 
creative block, it it's more abstract and free flowing and less literal. I really like that distinction you've made between being able to create and then being blocked in a sense of that wasn't fulfilling. I think that's really interesting because there's nothing physically stopping you from putting paint to paper, washi to paper, whatever you're doing. But I guess it's more that mental space that you're in that you're getting out of it what you're what you're wanting to what you're wanting to. Um, that's really interesting. So if someone is listening to this now, maybe feeling uninspired, what would you say to them? So there there are a few things. Well, firstly, if they're uninspired, who cares? You can still make art. Like it doesn't matter. Or if you want, if you need to take a break, you don't have to be making art all the time. If you feel like you need, um, we go through seasons in our art making, right? Like, so if you feel like you need a break and you feel like you need a replenishing of your well and to take things in and to just, yeah, just to refill that well, take things in, feel good rather than stretching yourself, then do that. But if you want to stretch yourself, um, there are a few ways of doing it. I think taking an online class or doing a YouTube tutorial is great. Like it's so great because you are just not listening or not like listening to the world around you, just listening to this one person and you're doing exactly what they say. That's like super way to make something, even if you don't feel like it, or even if you feel like you are not able to get into your truth or your authentic self or whatever you want to call it that's a great way another way is to really go to like basics right what is something that you are very good at that makes you feel great do that or a supply that you know exactly how to use um just like lowering the barriers to entry that's why uh, trying something brand new because you know you're going to suck. And so then when you do suck, you don't feel bad about it because you're like, yeah, that makes sense. I suck. You can also just make, I love doing color palettes, just taking my washi and my watercolors and just going yellow, orange, red. It, that's it. But it feels good. You don't need to be making art all the time. I think as well, I saw something recently um, when I've been looking at sort of the disconnect between what we create and then what we want to create and maybe that being kind of something playing in our mind of oh I haven't created what I wanted to create therefore it's bad and and then you just don't you know put your like show up for your journal um and it was about basically your creativity almost being like a waste pipe like a water pipe um I think they were talking about writing but I think it relates to art as well is that by doing those prompts like you say um, you kind of have to work through things before then all the like, good stuff comes through the pipe. So you kind of have to rinse everything out. So doing those little tasks, like you say, I think that's mm. a really great way of doing that. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it is it's connected to your headspace and like where you're at as to whether it will just come to you or not. I was going to also ask if there's anything specifically that inspires you more than other things for, for example color is something that that gets me inspired more like if I see colors I'm like ooh. versus some people obviously see pictures or images or photos is there something that you kind of are more drawn to when it comes to creating words okay words and like words that have been given to me or found and I think that's why I always like describing you know art describing art the way writers describe writing because it's a similar part of our brains and it's a similar process in that there's like a whole bunch of magic to it that you know it's not something that you can go one two three four and I think writers are much more articulate than artists because you know, hello that's why we're artists because we are expressing ourselves through art um but yeah words as soon as like if someone says something to me just right, then I know that I have to make an art journaling page from it or a book or something. I love that. I love that it because that's something that's almost opposite end for me. Like I'll see a quote maybe, but yeah, I've I've never really been on that end of it. So I like that you're you're inspired by the written side of, of journaling. In the same vein, I cannot imagine being inspired by colours. 
<laughs> like I feel like all I want to do, <laughs> yeah, all I want to do is just use like beige and white and white gym <laughs> leg, and any other color makes me very uncomfortable. So do you feel like you you would see a color palette and then be keen to use that or? Yeah. Yeah. I, I do. I will see. I don't know. I'll, when we were allowed out, <laughs> when we were, you know, able to go places, um, I could be sat on, sat on a train or something and see someone walk past with an outfit that has certain colors. And I'd be like, oh, that'd be a good, a good color palette for flowers or drawing this. And it kind of go from there. Yeah, Kayla, you're about you on the brown. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I feel like Meg's probably more your end. <laughs> yeah, but you, I mean, Meg, you rock like the browns and the oranges. I can, I can't. That's too much color for me. Too much color. Oh, <laughs> I've never been told I'm too colorful. So, <laughs> so can we chat a bit about your iconic art vlogs that you're doing? Um, and kind of that creative expression. So do you just do art or are there like other things that you express yourself creatively with, like the vlogs? I like all these adjectives you give to me with, like iconic. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, my, so vlogging, I started watching vlogs way back when, um, when my son was a newborn and I basically spent my life sitting on the couch breastfeeding my son and so I had nothing to do and so I watched art art vlogs Uh, and ever since then there's like something sparked to me that I wanted to do this and I wanted to video things and I think vlogging is such a good way of learning your camera and learning what you like and expressing yourself otherwise and it's taken me four years but finally I am putting it out there. I had, I checked when I eventually decided to publish it. I had like, I've got like 200 videos more than that. I don't know. So many times that I've tried to do it and just not. And the reason I eventually just did it was because, because of this creative block that I'm currently going through and I would like to get out of it. It's been too long. It's, it's starting to irritate me now. And so I'm trying to express myself. I've still got that feeling inside of me that I need to let out. And currently that's going out through video and I'm having so much fun with that and so much fun with the technical side of it and all of that. But other than, I think other than video and art journaling, no, nothing else creatively. I think art journaling is the only creative thing that's ever stuck. So are your videos kind of inspiring you then to do something that maybe you, I don't want to say like it's worth putting on video, but do you sort of have that mentality of like, I've got to show up with something creative or something that people would want to see? Does that kind of impact you in any way? When, when I started my creative journey, um, and I'm saying that with rolled eyes, but I started with scrapbooking, right? I started with Project Life, which is a form of scrapbooking. And I was going through depression and I decided to do that for unknown reasons. <laughs> and, um, and what scrapbooking gave me while I was depressed was a reason to leave the house, to take photos of something, to put in my scrapbook, a way to be grateful about the life that I am currently living, to see how much good there is, even when it feels like, like the isn't any good um and I think that's what vlogging is doing for me now I mean I'm not depressed at the moment but when I haven't made anything good creatively for a long time then yeah then I I mean I feel a little bit down and vlogging encourages me to do something interesting if only to film it to make some kind of art even though I don't feel like it um, and to look for the, for the beauty in the small moments and in the everyday, I highly recommend it. I think you should do it too. <laughs> I know I need to build up the courage. I know Daisy, you do vlogging, don't I was you? Say, I agree. You should do it, Meg. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any tips? <laughs> it's something that you kind of just have to start with vlogging because there's, there's so much pressures nowadays to have like 
an amazing camera and an amazing setup and amazing shots and stuff but from what I've realized from doing it is a lot of people just want to see the process they want to see what you're getting up to they want to see I don't know like your day-to-day the behind the scenes what's going on and that's easy enough to do like I just use eventually I want to upgrade my camera but that's not a, a, a thing that I'm going to be able to do right now so I'm just using what I have and I'm just as I'm doing things setting up the camera talking through what I'm doing showing things so yeah I've said just do it Meg just do it (laughs) I think you but you can also apply like the lessons that you've learned through making art to this like you know it's going to suck in the beginning right you know it's not going to be as good as in five years time you know yeah you just need to do it and you're gonna make cringy cringy stuff to start yeah (laughs) Yeah, that you'll I'm look sure. back on and go <laughs> well <laughs> Kaylee, Kaylee you came out with like a feature film virtually with that intro that you had I was like wow this is so professional but I suppose like you say you've got those 200 videos that you've kind of pushed past that so it looks like you've created something amazing so I mean my first vlog was not my first video that I've ever made so there's all of that stuff and Stephen Presfield my favorite person in the world maybe more than my husband no not more than my husband but Stephen Presfield said that he's an overnight success 30 years in the making and I think that's so oh I love it so much because it, my first vlog was not my first foray into this at all I've been making online courses and I've been making I've been making vlogs I just haven't published them right back to the inspiration then which kind of I think leads into all this resource wise if someone is looking for maybe a place to go or what they can do what would you recommend there's a lot happening inside of you inside of you as a person so before you look into other people and into other places for inspiration look into yourself and if you've already got an art journaling habit you can look into your past journals or you can scroll down your own instagram fields Or you can just, you know, just look at photos of places you've been and people you've been with and the paint color on your previous rooms, you know, like if you can look for it within yourself and there's so much to find there, really. Yeah, especially with the whole process we've just been discussing as well. It's not being afraid to, you know, be inspired by whatever that was and then recognize, okay, I did that it didn't work. It didn't turn out how I wanted it to, um, pushing past that. And then you keep going until you maybe can then fight through that creative block that you might have, um, until you hit that like sweet spot of like, Oh, that's what I wanted to create. That's what I wanted to say. And it's not always something that you necessarily go into it with. So like, I will often go to my journal and create something that I didn't even know that I wanted to, Art really is about letting letting go of control. And once you're okay with that, then things are so much better, right? It's just as soon as you're okay with the fact that you might suck, probably will suck, then you make way for the magic that can happen. In terms of your your art journaling then, is there a particular theme that you journal about or topic that you journal about um, that I'm assuming is then something you are constantly inspired by uh the sense of belonging and feeling out of place because you know I'm a South African immigrant in Germany Germans are weird (laughs) I miss South Africans I miss English um so most of most of my journey is about answering the question of where is my home where do I belong I was gonna say do you think that's something that maybe people are missing in terms of having that uh, connection with the art, is do you think that maybe is what you, you know? If you if you just create, there's obviously nothing stopping you doing that. But then maybe it's not fulfilling because you're not connecting with something, and you might not know what that is, and you obviously have to explore that. But do you think that's maybe what kind of strengthens your creative practice? No, honestly, <laughs> like to give it to you straight, no. I think that. There are different reasons to make art. You don't, it doesn't always have to be, have a deeper meaning. Um, I have managed to found community and belonging through art. 
And I think that we're always asking a question, whether that question is um, something existential, like what am I on earth for, or where do I belong? Or it could be what's for lunch. You know, we're always going to be asking that question and sometimes our art will answer us. I think I struggle with that at the moment because I'm in such a like all over the place moment of my life. So like I will, (laughs) I'll journal about food. (laughs) um I tend to process the deeper stuff personally like in a separate like just written journal or something versus the creative stuff which is more my escape from those sort of things sometimes they do cross over I want to clarify I didn't mean that like art had to have a deeper meaning I was just curious because I know you I've seen those sorts of themes in your work before as well Kaylee so I didn't know whether that was something that maybe help to create um but yeah definitely just making things because they're pretty um is definitely something that I do all the time I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that like an interesting thing because my art journey journey is very interwoven with the get messy community and with the art journey community at large and I think if either one of those were taken away it would just not be the same like if I if there were no longer people in the art journey community, I don't know if I would, like, maybe, maybe in a different way, but they're so interwoven. I can't see one without the other. I can't see art journaling without being able to talk to people about it, right? Like what we're doing now, we're talking about this thing that, I don't, like, my parents don't understand it at all. You know, there's just it feels good to be seen at the same time. And I think that by exploring belonging and home and all of that in my art, I'm able to find it through the community. Like I feel like this is a space that I belong in. Creative community as a whole is quite inspiring the way we can bounce off each other. Like in this conversation now, I'm feeling a little bit inspired. I'm like, just thinking about all these creative thoughts um but yeah that's definitely interesting that whole community aspect so you you find that really helpful then in terms of your your creativity yeah it just it feels like when you are when you are nurturing a hobby and you have support and warmth and love rather than a place of struggle and all of that like I'm finding so much value in coming from a place of love and caring for growth. I think that older generations believed strongly in struggle and discipline and doing the same thing every day and routines and, and like basically like a military lifestyle where you're forced to do everything. And I think current generations now, younger generations, we believe that you should just like love. And if you don't feel like journaling today, then you don't need to do it. You don't need to force yourself into anything. You don't need to make sure that you're journaling every day at eight o'clock. Otherwise you're going to fall off the wagon. No, like everything should come from a place of love and kindness. And I think, damn, the art journey community is friendly. I think before this one, I was part of um, the food blogging community when I was back in South Africa. And that's also a good community because everyone's full and eating good food and happy all the time. Yeah, and art journalists, I think they're very mentally healthy because we're getting all of that stuff out onto paper. Yeah, I agree with the the community aspect of journaling and all the different like nooks of it as well. Like there's the art journaling, the creative, the junk, the like there's so many different nooks and it's that's I've made so many friends through it. Like it's it's such a big part of journaling for me is having the space to share things and yeah see what other people getting up to and try other things I probably wouldn't have come across as many (laughs) side hobbies or side journaling things as as I would have if uh, I didn't find the the journaling community yeah I definitely think it's kind of a inspire in the sense that you see everyone else creating and making and it's almost like I want to be a part of that and I want to I want to join in and share and and things like that so I think it's definitely a great little community that we've got do either of you get overwhelmed by it at any point yeah 100% how how do you 
kind of overcome that like do you take a break from social media that's something that I still struggle with I will just go MIA completely (laughs) for like a week and then be like hey I did this last week I mean I think that's good and I think we go through different seasons right sometimes we need to be sharing everything and sometimes we need to be creating for ourselves I think what helps me is to always be aware of what I'm needing and what I'm giving myself because I don't want to be forcing something on myself that I don't want. Um, And so, yeah, I often take Instagram. I don't know. Instagram is double-edged sword, right? Like it's given me beautiful friendships and like friendships that have surpassed Instagram and surpassed DMs. And it's given me really interesting conversations like the one we're having now. And so sometimes you just need to take the good and remove the bad. So for me, that looks like staying in contact with friends I've made on Instagram, but deleting the app, right? For a little bit. And then going back when I'm ready and when I want to see what everyone else is doing. So it's just like taking what you need. Do you take do you take breaks on Instagram? Purposely? I, no. <laughs> no. I don't like <laughs> schedule breaks. I just go oh I can't I can't I don't know what to share I don't know what I'll just we'll leave it to one side for a bit I tend to because I have like a personal account as well like I'll just log it into that one and and log out of my creative one and that usually helps like I'll I'll have that time off and yeah like I'll talk to my friends that I've made through it because they tend to be over on that side of Instagram and then yeah come back to it feeling a bit more okay I have I have stuff I want to share and I want to see what other people are up to and I suppose it's just juggling it uh, the best, the best you can. But yeah, I still definitely struggle with it a lot more <laughs> than I used to. Yeah, because I think that's as well one of the issues people have with inspiration is feeling overwhelmed by seeing everything else going on on social media and thinking, oh my goodness, I'm not making as much as that. I'm not, you know, that creative or that good, or I need to create for a social media post, which is bonkers please do not do that (laughs) that is like I think the worst way of creating creating just to have something to post but I definitely think that it can be overwhelming to see so much and you know everyone's highlight reels as well everyone's sharing what they think is their best stuff they're not necessarily showing behind the scenes stuff so there's all that like comparison and it can just feel very overwhelming so I think that's why people struggle then with inspiration is because you just think, well, I'm not as good as what I'm seeing on Instagram. My stuff's not worthy, but I don't think that's the right attitude to have. As soon as, if I'm on Instagram, as soon as I have any thought that, oh, she's creating something amazing and I haven't made anything good in a while. As soon as I have any of those thoughts, I delete the app. Then I know that I've that it's gotten to me, right? That it's gone into a bad place or I, I because I can't. And I think that's also why, I'm so wary of inspiration is because I need to make sure that it's coming from myself. And if I'm taking in what everyone else is doing, then there's not going to be for me that feeling that I look for when I'm making art. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Cause then, you know, what someone else is creating that has inspired them might not necessarily connect or align with what either what you like or what, you need from art journaling because I feel like we all come to it from a different place you know all sorts of different backgrounds and come to it with different needs from it I guess so what's going to fulfill you won't fulfill me and won't fulfill Daisy like everyone takes different things from it so if we're all trying to do the same thing then that's not going to work no one's going to be happy with what they're creating so Mm-hmm. I, th- I think that's um, quite important to remember is that um, it's almost like your your story in a way. It's like it's completely different to someone else's, their journey, their process. So if you keep striving for that, you're not going to make it. And if you do, you're probably not going to be happy with it. It's not going to completely fulfill that creative block, like you said, and that, mm-hmm. you know, breathing, breathing out, was it? Or breathing in? Oh, that's an, <laughs> that's an interesting conversation because I know that for a lot of people, it feels like breathing in and I'm like, oh no, definitely out. Yeah, I like the way that you see that the art that we make is going to be what it is. And we don't really have much control because the art that we're making, every time we are making art, we are bringing 
all of ourselves. Like we're bringing our history, we're bringing what's happening in our life at the moment, we're bringing our supplies, our knowledge, our uh, favorite techniques, our taste, all of that comes to the page. I mean, yeah, you j- that's what's going to happen. So as soon as you start trying to emulate someone else's work, you're not bringing what they're bringing. You're bringing your stuff. And so it will make sense that it's not going to feel okay. That being said, though, I mean, there is a lot of value in stealing like an artist and in copying other people's work and trying all those styles out. Because even when you're doing something the way someone else does it, you're still bringing yourself. And so it's still going to look like you. And I think with sharing on Instagram, like I have no issue if someone's going to make the exact same journal page as me. Like if they're going to make it look exactly, I mean, I don't know how, but if they copying brushstroke for brushstroke, I've got no issue with that. I think that's cool. I know a lot of people have issue with that. How do you feel about that? I guess it's that distinction between um, the art techniques and then how you're using that and how you're applying it because even if everyone was sat in a classroom taking a Kaylee instructions on how to create a Kaylee page everyone's page is going to come out different so the distinction I think between the the technique and obviously trying things that you've seen versus how you're actually going to process that and then use that in your art and take bits that you like bits that you don't so like I, I love your modeling paste with stencils which you know are normally in relatively toned down colors so for someone like Daisy to take that and make that bright yellow is like you know would bring her a lot of joy um but isn't something necessarily that would bring you joy so that's like completely different but with the same the same technique so I think it's all about how you then use that in your in your creative process I I agree with that um I think everyone like you can't make it mirror like a mirror image like they're always going to be slightly different I think they, I mean they they say with just like to learn art and to to get better at it you, a lot of artists will copy like other people's art because you're building your own way of doing it and that's like the best way to do it is to copy other people's art I think the line comes obviously is if then someone shares it make sure to give credit mm. where it's due that's that's the only difference when it comes down to it like you could copy anyone's work but as long as you credit them fine no issues no issues whatsoever with that and probably shouldn't sell it probably also a good idea yeah 100 (laughs) percent what do you wish you'd known when you started out the difference between a beginner and someone who's been doing it for a long time right is someone who's been doing it for a long time knows that this uncomfortable scary figuring things out thing is part of the journey and you and it's not less scary right it's not less scary being vulnerable and making art and being vulnerable and putting yourself out there um it's just that you're more used to it and I mean I suppose it's the same like even someone who's bungee jumped a hundred times even on time a hundred it's still like you still get that feeling in your throat um but you just you know that you're going to be okay I think I would tell myself that it's important to figure out my own reason for doing things and this is just like general good life advice is when you're starting something new know that the the journey is in um, defining it for yourself and finding what suits you so it's the same as like if you're going jogging or whatever like if you want to run 5k's you're going to figure out, okay, I like running outside. I like running this route. I don't like doing that. You know, you're figuring all these things. And for some reason, art is just, we're expected to already know everything. So knowing that that it's going to suck, it's totally fine. This is supposed to happen. You're supposed to suck now. You're not supposed to be uh, Leonardo da Vinci the first time you open up a watercolor palette it's totally okay that you're crappy and the only way that you're going to get better is to continue being vulnerable it's fine I think it was da Vinci that said if people knew how hard I work to achieve my mastery they wouldn't be so impressed yeah I've heard that too actually yeah I thought that kind of ties into the whole us not sharing everything that we do so if if you see someone just showing up and creating amazing art every single time, you know, 
that's not a reflection of what they're actually doing so yeah I think that's really important to bear in mind I obviously have only just met you now (laughs) so I'm gonna be having a little stalk of your Instagram and a bit more of a look at what you do and like the get messy side of it and stuff (laughs) um because you've inspired me from what you've said whether I now now I need to go into my office and and do some stuff I like your mindset on it and I'm definitely going to take some of that on board thank you (laughs) you might spot some yellow in my work (laughs) okay okay that's a a good start (laughs) so um just to wrap up then if someone only takes away one thing from this podcast what do you want it to be that there's beauty and vulnerability and there's beauty in letting go and being okay with whatever comes out oh well thank you so much for taking the time to join us today um I think it's been a really great discussion on inspiration and everything like that so where can people find you if they want to see more of your work Kaylee it's Kaylee Gray on Instagram and get messy art journal on Instagram and get messy art.com thank you so much for listening to the craft name podcast if you've got any questions or want to let us know what you thought of the episode you can find and follow us over on Instagram and YouTube at Migraine Cow and at Meg Journals.